All right, so welcome everyone. Let's continue with OpenGL, OpenTK programming. Um, let's go, let's run this and just see where we left off. Uh, we have a triangle being displayed, and we have uh, vertices being sent to the graphics card, and it's now showing those vertices to us at, as a triangle. The main thing I want to accomplish is now add additional attributes to our vertices, or I want to in this one I want to add one additional attribute. Uh, right now we have an attribute of position, so we can define where the position is of the triangle. But now let's define also the color of each vertex of the triangle. And so let's talk about how we add additional attributes to our, um, to our vertices. I'd also like to be able to change different attributes of the window itself, like how big the window is and the title and where it shows up initially. If you notice when we, when we run the program, I can stop that and run it. It shows up for a second in the top left in its default position and default size, and then it jumps to the new size. And I don't want to do that. I want the window to just show up after it's initialized. It just comes right up as the correct size and the correct position centered on screen. Now let's close this and go back to the code. Before I do that, the very first thing I want to do is I noticed that I did not delete the vertex array object in the previous video. So every time we create one of these objects in OpenGL, we need to make sure they're deleted. And so I can scroll down here to our on, uh, it's the unload function. And you can see I'm deleting the program. That's our shader program. I'm deleting our vertex buffer, but I never actually delete the vertex array object. So let's go ahead and do that here. The first thing is to bind a vertex array, and we're going to bind it to zero. And that'll just tell the graphics card that we don't want anything bound. So we'll make sure that there's no vertex array objects bound when we go to delete our vertex array, our, our vertex array object. And then we're going to delete the vertex array object. And then all we have to do is pass in the handle to our vertex array. And that is that. OK, now let's go ahead and set up our window so it shows up centered, but without the default window first. The way I'm going to do that is by changing these native window settings. So let's bring this down to the next line. In fact, I'm going to put each one of these on its own line. And instead of using the default values here, let's go ahead and create a new native window settings. Then I'm going to use some uh, open and close brackets to set these up. So this will allow me to pick different uh, properties of the native window settings and set them up directly. So the first I want to do is the title. So let's go ahead and set that to something. Um, I'm going to pass a title in to our game constructor as a string. So we'll just pass in the title. And I'm going to give it a default value, and I'm just going to call this game1. So if we don't put anything, it'll just give us that default value. So let's pass the title through right here. Uh, next thing is the size. I want to be able to set the size of our window. I'm going to pass that to our game class as a width and a height. The size is actually a vector 2, so um, or a vector 2i, and we'll just pass in the width and the height like so. Uh, next is the border style, or the uh, border of the window. I'm going to make this a fixed border. Uh, next, the visibility. So start visible, I'm going to set that to false. And what that's going to allow is that it won't actually display the window when it's setting everything up. And so that, that little window that pops up at first, that's just the default size and the default uh, position, it won't show that. It'll wait. Uh, we can now wait till we've initialized it, and then we can tell it that it's time to see the window and set it to visible, and then it'll show the correct window. Uh, next, focused. We want to start focused to true. So the API, um, I'm just going to make sure this is OpenGL. We're not going to use OpenGL ES. Uh, next, the profile. I want to set this to the core profile. Okay. And then uh, finally, let's set the version. And uh, we've been using 3.3, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with that. So version 3.3. All right, so that's everything we need for the window setting. Now, we're actually setting the width and the height right here inside of our native window settings. And so I don't need to set that inside of our center window function. So I'm going to take that out right there. But I still want the window to be centered. So we're going to center window, and we're going to use the width and height that we passed right here. OK, so now if we run this, Actually, the width and the height are not defined, so we'd have to go back to our program, and you can see it's giving an error saying it needs a width and a height. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these some default values. So let's just make this 1280 for the width, and the height is going to be 768, okay? And just some default values that the window can come up with. So the window will be created, but it's currently not visible. Let's go down to the onload function, and uh, once it's loaded, we're going to tell the window that is visible is now true. So once, if, if we wait to set the visibility here to the onload function, it will only show the window once everything is set up correctly. And so let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. 
Okay, that looks perfect. Okay, so the window waited to show up once everything was initialized correctly, and you can see the title has changed up here to game one. All right, perfect. Okay, now let's get down to the meat of what we want to talk about here. We want to actually now add some additional vertex attributes. We want to be able to color every vertex. So that here's our vertex array. Uh, we have each vertex has an X, a Y, and a Z value. But now we're going to have four more components. Um, and these four components are going to be color components. We're going to have a red component, a green component, a blue component, and an alpha component. And each one of these components is going to be a value between 0 and 1. And so if a red component is has a value of 1, that's going to mean the red component of the pixel is going to be on as bright as it can be. And so in, and they, they should be in this order. What we need to do is pick an order that we want them to be in, and then we need to stick to that order every time we use it. I'm going to add four floating point values here to every vertex. All right, so the first one, I want the first vertex to be red. So I'm going to set that to one. Uh, now the green component is going to be zero, the blue component is going to be zero, and the alpha component is going to be one. The alpha component of the pixel controls how um, transparent the pixel is. So if I put one in there, the pixel is completely, or not the pixel, the vertex is completely opaque, meaning you can't see through it at all. If I put a zero in there for the alpha, that means it is completely transparent, meaning we can see right through that vertex completely. And so you can see now I have four more floating point values that define the color. And I'm going to do that for every vertex. So now here's vertex number, or vertex uh, number two, which is vertex one in our list. The red component is going to be zero. I want this one to be green, so I'm going to set green to one blue to zero and alpha to one. So here's our last vertex in the triangle. Um, the red component is going to be zero. The green component is going to be zero. The blue component is going to be one because I want this one to be blue. And then the alpha will be one as well. And so there we go. There's our new vertices. And we can pass that to the graphics card through our vertex buffer. And we don't need to change the vertex buffer at all. We are already sending the right size vertex buffer because of this parameter right here. Whatever the length of the vertices or however many items we have, we just multiply that by the size of a floating point, and it'll set up a vertex buffer with the correct size to store all of this data. But the one thing we do need to set up is our vertex array object. Um, our graphics card, we can send this data to the graphics card, but the graphics card doesn't understand that we have position and we have color. It only understands that we have position, and that's right here with our vertex attrib pointer. Um, so let's go ahead and set up another vertex attrib pointer that's going to indicate that we have a color component or four color components to our vertex. And so we're just going to right here, after we bind our vertex array object, um, after we set up our first vertex attrib pointer, let's set up the next one. This is going to be a vertex attrib pointer, and this is going to be at index number one. That's how we're going to identify this in our shader. Okay, so in our vertex shader, this is going to be at location number one, and we'll set that up here in just a second. Uh, the next field here is how many components does this attribute have? And you can see we have four components. We have a red, green, uh, blue, and alpha. Okay, so we have four components, and then we have to tell it what type these are. These are floating point values. We do not need to normalize these, so this will be set to false. And normalization, if we are using a type that is not floating point, we can tell the graphics card that we do want to normal, normalize these values. So in other words, if I pass in a byte, or if I tell it that this vertex, that this vertex attribute is a byte, then it can take whatever I pass in there and normalize it based on how big the value is compared to a byte. So if the value I'm passing in is 128, and the size of a byte is 256, it's it would normalize it to 0.5, meaning it's halfway to the size of a byte. So we don't need to do that since we're already using floating point values, and we are normalizing all of our values already. So with these color attributes, an, a value of 1 indicates that it is the maximum brightness. A value of 0 means it is the minimum brightness. A 1 on the red component indicates that this is the maximum brightness for a red. And we can pretty much create any color we want by changing the red, green, and blue component. Now, the next thing inside our vertex attrib pointer here is it wants to know the stride. And the stride is the number of bytes between each vertex. We have seven different floating point values, 
and then we go to the next vertex. And so what we're going to do is 7 times the size of a float, and that'll tell the graphics card how far it needs to advance inside each array to get to the next vertex. And then finally, we have the offset. I and the, I think this is the offset anyways. Um, yeah, offset. So the offset tells the graphics card how far do I need to advance inside the actual vertex to get to this attribute. Okay, so in this case, this is the color attribute. With the position attribute, we don't need to advance at all. It's always going to start at the, the beginning of the vertex. Now, every time we're looking at the color attribute, we need to advance in the vertex to the color portion of the vertex, okay? Since the position has three floating point values, we need to advance by three times the size of float to get to the actual color attribute of this vertex. So that's all we need for the color attribute or the vertex trib pointer. And then finally, we need to enable the vertex trib array, and that'll be at uh, index number one. And these values should match. So this index should match this one. Okay, so we've enabled it. Okay, so now our graphics card knows what a vertex looks like. The final thing we need to do is go down to our shader code and tell it and tell our shader code what are you know what does a vertex look like? What what values what values are we passing in for a vertex? After I've set up a position, I'm now going to set up a color. So this is going to be at layout. Um, the location is equal to one. And that's this index right here. We're going to pass in a vector four because we have four components. We have the red, green, blue, and alpha. And I'm going to call this a color. The vertex shader isn't actually going to do anything with that color. It's just going to pass it on to the uh, pixel shader so the pixel shader can decide what color it needs to be. And so the way we do that is by defining a value that we're going to pass out. And so I'm going to use the out keyword. This is something we're passing out from the vertex shader to the pixel shader. So when I type out, I'm saying pass this value out to the pixel shader. Um, this is going to be a vector four. And I call this V color. Finally, all I have to do is tell V color what it is inside the program. We're going to set V color equal to A color. And all we're doing is passing the value that we receive here to the V color we have right here. And so that's everything we need for our vertex shader. Our vertex shader gets the color and it passes on to the pixel shader so the pixel shader can work with it. Now inside our pixel shader, we want to, we want to receive the data. We want to receive that color from the vertex shader. And so here we're going to pass in a vector four that is V color. Now it's very important the type vector four and the name have to match exactly. That's how the pixel shader understands that these are the same thing. And then it can receive that data from the vertex shader. Instead of setting this default color here, we can actually use the V color right here and get rid of the color we were setting before. And so now the actual pixel color is going to be the color that we're passing through with our vertex shader. And so that right there is pretty much everything we need to do. And let me just talk a little bit about my naming conventions. This A position, this A color, and this V color. In general, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just saying everything that is a vertex attribute, I'm calling that, I'm prefacing it with A and then position, or A color. And that's, you know, for me, that's just short for attribute. This is an attribute that I'm passing in. And then V is the vertex. So I'm basically saying this is something that I'm passing out from the vertex shader. And then if you're in the pixel shader and it's prefaced with V, that means this is something that I'm receiving from the vertex shader. Okay, so I think we have everything we need there. Let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's how you set up additional attributes for your vertices. Each one of the vertices has the color that I set. And as we get to the middle, it kind of blends them together. The graphics cards, uh, actually, when you set vertex colors, they interpolate between the colors as you get closer to the other colors. So that's how you add additional attributes. Another common attribute you may want to add is a texture coordinate, and we should be able to get to that. Uh, but right now, this is basically how you add additional attributes uh, to your vertices. Next time, what I'd like to do is actually um, talk about index buffers and creating different types of shapes. So I think next time, I'm actually going to create a rectangle and we're going to create it using an index buffer so we can store vertices very efficiently.